Now, this question comprises of uh, one requirement which related to related to VAT, other requirement related to corporation, that is with respect to research and development R and D pertaining to small and medium enterprise. Quite frequently, this topic is coming in the exam. And the next one is the implication of uh, payment to an employee, the so kind of some employment related issue. Let's discuss the question. You should assume that the date today is 10th June and the Dent Limited require advice on about VAT registration. This is issue number one. The corporation tax treatment of expenditure, expenditure on R&D. This is issue number two. And the after tax cost of remuneration to be provided to a key employee. That is issue number three. So a typical 20 mark question comprises of three issues. Tent Limited will be incorporated and start trading on 1st July. That is in the tax year. Will undertake a research project to develop a product related to its trade and will be a small enterprise for the purpose of R&D and will prepare its first accounts to 30th June 2023. So that means accounts will be of 12 month period. Remember that a company's accounting period can be of 12 months, can be of less than 12 months but can never be more than 12. So what if, if accounting period is more than 12 months, but tax year can never be more than 12 months. So if suppose the accounting period is uh, 15 months, then we have to split this into two parts. One is 12 months, other is Three months. Now we'll make wholly taxable supplies for that purpose. Is selling the taxable supplies is budgeted income for the next year. So the value of trading receipt in the first few months will be low, such that the dent limited will not be required to be compulsory registered for VAT until first April. Last in the last session, I told about that the threshold is 85,000. This is VAT threshold. And if that threshold has been satisfied, then there will be some compulsory registration. And if that threshold is not satisfied, then a business can go for voluntary registration. And this is beneficial in some case. Some case it is not beneficial. Now it has been written here that Dent Limited expect, however, to receive substantial fee in April to June, such that it anticipates generating an overall taxable trading profit for the year ended June 2023. All of the customers, this is something important, will be registered for VAT. It means we are transacting with a B2B, that is a business to business transaction. Now there is a difference between B2B transaction and B2C transaction. Because if your end user is a final consumer, then charging VAT will make the price high. So the consumer might be reluctant so that in case of a B2C, no need to go for voluntary registration. And if it is a B2B, then you can go for voluntary registration. There is no issue. On the basis of this information, we can attempt the first part, and that is a theoretical question worth six marks where calculations are not required. Flat rule, tax rule about value added tax. So, advise Dent Limited on the implication for the recovery of input tax with effect from 1st April when it will be compulsory to do so and explain why it is beneficial for the company instead to register voluntarily with effect from 1st July. So first thing is the implication of 
recovery the implication of vat recovery as a result of compulsory registration this is the first issue that has been asked so what is the meaning of the implication that you can say that its consequences also discuss the consequences so one thing keep in mind that there is a concept called pre registration input vat and there is a rule related with goods that in case of goods we can go back four years with some condition and for services we can go back six months from the date of registration provided that goods are in stock and services are for business purpose so what is the consequence we can get our input vat back on the cost that has been incurred prior to the registration so we have to write first about the goods second about the services and then the implication of optional or voluntarily registration as it has been mentioned in the question that we are doing b2c b2b so in case of b2b it is beneficial to opt for voluntary registration so why it is beneficial because we can we can claim input tax claim we can claim input tax earlier so that will be a beneficial thing because there will be a repayment of vat so it will improve your cash flows and as it is a b2b so no issue to charge vat to business why because business will pass this on to the final consumer so business will not mind anything about that someone is charging value added tax so this is what six marks requirement now let's move forward to the corporation issue explain again the question starts from the theoretical one the corporation tax treatment of rnd of 353000 for the year ended june 23 and on the assumption that tenant limited registered voluntarily calculate the amount of deduction which will be available against rnd for corporation tax purpose So here we have to show some calculation as well. But first, see what is the issue. Now see, budgeted R and D expenditure. specialist equipment now this is a capital expenditure and on this capital expenditure this extra 130% expenditure rule is not applicable property cost 46000 consumables 12000 staffing cost 185000 so we have to check staffing cost as well whether this rule is applicable on staffing cost or not so we have to see this staffing cost the above figures are all exclusive of vat the property cost entirely comprises of light heat and water allowed for 130% expenditure the staff cost include a fee of 25000 to an agency for the pro provision of an unconnected external contractor service now this 25000 is to be adjusted so we need to 
adjust this 25,000 because only the 65% of cost is allowed. And that 65% is 16250. This is allowed, not 25 for 130%. Similarly, the remainder of the staff cost fully relates to amount payable to or on behalf of employees, including pension contribution totaling 14. So, in this question, first of all, the R&D expenditure, which is how much? 3,53,000. This 3,53,000 is allowable expense. But we have to deduct 130% extra. And that's on qualifying expenditure. Which qualify. And what not qualify will deduct. Okay. So the qualifying expenditure is let me check. This is not qualifying. Property costs and consumables, 100% qualifying. So, property. We have property, 46,000. We have consumables, and that is 12,000. This is qualified too. And we have uh, like. staff cost so we need to adjust the staff cost so what we can do from 185 deduct 25000 which is disallowed and add 16250 which is allowed so as a result 185 minus 25000 plus 16250 and we have 176250 one seven six two five zero and the total amount is two thirty four two fifty. So this two thirty four two fifty is eligible for one thirty percent to make it one thirty into one point three two three four. 250 into 1.3 304525. This is extra. This is 130. So total is our original that is 353,000 original expenditure plus 130 that is 204525. So how much is allowed? 353. Answer is 657525. 657525 is allowed to deduct from corporation tax profit. Simple thing is that you have to explain that why this staffing cost is not allowed and why 65% is allowed. Now the third one is about employee, Alina, which is a designer engineer. Alina will commence employment with Tent Limited on 1st July 2022 to lead the R&D project. Her salary is 80,000. The first benefit is salary. On 1st July, Tent Limited will additionally provide Alina with the following None of which are included in the budgeted cost. A lump sum payment of 10,000 in recognition of her forthcoming employment. A lump sum payment. Second hand computer costing 1,000, of which Alina will have use, including as private use for the first nine months of her employment. Temporary living accommodation for the first six months. So basically, there are three benefits. 
one is a lump sum payment other is a computer and the third one is temporary living accommodation as far as the living accommodation is concerned will provide a flat and this is the rented flat and the market value is 2 lakh 25000 annual value is 2800 now as far as the uh, benefits are concerned so the living accommodation benefits covered as annual value and rent whichever is higher so here i have to see that uh, annual value given is how much is the annual value annual value is 2800 and as the person is using is for six months so this is 1400 and the second thing is that rent for six months the per month rent is 660 multiplied by six and the value is 3960 and you will take the higher of value as an accommodation now what is the requirement requirement says that state the income tax implication of the receipt of lump sum payment for alina and calculate after tax cost for dent limited against this lump sum payment and computer and temporary living accommodation to Alina in its year ended June 2023. So for Alina and for the corporation, and we have to calculate after tax cost to dent limited as well. After tax cost. So whatever the company is providing to employee is the cost for the company. Okay. And as a result, company will get some benefit as well now first of all implication for alina means employee of lump sum payment This lump sum payment is fully taxable on employee. Why fully taxable? Because it relates to future services. So, this is a taxable income for Alina. Now, as far as the after tax cost is concerned, What company is paying to employ? A lump sum payment of 10,000. So let's calculate. Let's calculate pre tax cost. Pre tax cost of lump sum payment so payment is 10,000 and employer has to pay class 1 and class 1a against this so in this case the employer has to pay class 1 and IC and this class 1 NIC rate we can apply checking from the tax sheet and the rate is we can apply here 10,000 multiplied by 13.8% that is 1380 the total cost is 11380 this is pre-tax cost against lump sum
Now this this particular item, lump sum cost, is also eligible for. This is also eligible for R and D benefits. That is two thirty percent. So as a result, the allowable cost is two thirty percent. That is two six one seven four. So this is the deductible amount. Now, let's talk about the other one. That is provision of computer. Provision for computer and living accommodation. This is also being provided by the corporation. So we need to calculate their cost against this. So as far as the employment uh, accommodation is concerned, so what they are paying. They are paying rent of six sixty multiplied by six, that is three nine six zero. This is the outflow, and uh, we need to pay class one A because this is a non cash benefit. We need to find out class one A. And uh, for class one A, this class one A is depends on taxable benefit for Alina. So, what is the non-cash benefits total for Alina? Its taxable benefit is first of all the benefit against computer. And the benefits against accommodation, because one A is applicable on non-cash benefits. So, as far as computer is concerned, the cost of the computer is one thousand. Twenty percent is the tax rule, and she used for nine by twelve. So, this is one fifty. And uh, accommodation, we already taken this higher off. The total is four one one zero. This is the taxable one, and on this four one one zero, we apply thirteen point eight percent of one a, that is five six seven. So it's four five two seven, and the computer cost. One thousand. So. We are going to have five five two seven. This is the total cost, free tax cost. This is the free tax cost for the business. Now we need to find out tax so that we can identify total cost. Now, total deductible amount for the corporation as an expense from the profit and loss account, on which we get some tax relief, is one thousand against computer. This is the cost. Rest four five two seven. This is the cost, and the allowable expense against lump sum amount. So the total one is three one seven zero one. This is the deductible amount, and we get tax benefit, tax relief on this expense. The corporation tax rate is nineteen percent. We get tax relief of six zero two three. Now pre tax. Tax cost for the business is pre-tax cost. We need to find out. Well, this is pre-tax cost.
1 1 3 8 0 plus 5 5 2 7 total pre-tax cost is 1 6 9 0 7 minus tax relief 6 0 2 3 and the cost after tax cost is this is going to be after tax cost. The Empire Limited require advice on the cost of gifting a computer, number one, or alternatively making a loan to one of its stakeholders. Calc Limited has a requested advice on the tax implication of replacing a factory and acquiring a new warehouse. So this is basically a CGT related issue. Whenever you sell one item and acquire another item, you get a roll over relief. And this is possible for a company as well as for an individual. See, the first requirement explain with supporting calculations the total additional taxes payable by Sempire Limited. If Sempire Limited gives the computer to Nuri, if Sempire Limited makes a loan to Nuri and then write off the loan. And the B part is about chargeable gain. Chargeable gain related to company. Now see. Nuri. Nuri owns 75% of the ordinary shares in Semfire Limited. Has been a director of Semfire Limited for many years. Owns the whole of the ordinary share capital of Calc Limited. Sempire Limited is a UK resident close trading company. So this basically a to topic connected with a close trading company. Second issue is. Okay, the company is thinking about will either gift a computer to Nuri or make a loan to Nuri on the same day to allow him to purchase a computer. If Sempire Limited gives the computer, the computer was purchased for 2600 and having a market value of 1500. Sempire Limited has purchased no other plant and machinery for several years and the written down value of its main pool was nil. The sale proceed for the purpose of capital allowance will be nil. Nuri's private use of the computer has been insignificant throughout the period of ownership. The second option is Sempire Limited will make an interest-free loan of 1500 to Nuri and Sempire will write off the loan on 6th April 2025 after two years. Remember, it's a closed company. The closed company loan rule is applicable here. Second thing is that the Calc Limited disposed of a lease on Factory 1. Previously, assigned a 48 years lease on a factory building on 1st November for which it paid a premium of 1,65,000. That factory was used in the trade since when it has been rented to tenants who are not connected with the company. On 1st November, the company sold the lease with 42 years remaining for 2,6,000. There is an acquisition on 1st May for 96,000. Paid 138 for factory 2, which was its market value on 1st May 2022. 
So disposal of lease one, acquisition of factory two, and then acquisition of warehouse for seventy eight thousand. This warehouse is seventy percent occupied for business purpose and thirty percent is for non business purpose. Seventy percent business purpose. Now, what is the question? First, let's deal B part one. Calculate the chargeable gain for cal limited on the sale of these factory one. Explain with supporting calculation the amount of chargeable gain in above, which will remain liable to corporate tax if any, if cal limited claims the maximum amount of R O R. Lease percentages are given. Indexation factor also given. Now let's discuss. First of all, the gain on sale of lease factory one. So disposal of lease factory one. The disposal was made at a price of where is the price? This is the selling price, and we have to assign cost. On the basis of the percentage given on lease, that is ninety six point five nine three ninety nine point two eight nine. So, the proceed of disposal, it is two lakh six thousand, and we have to assign cost on the basis of life, one lakh sixty five thousand. Life. Forty-two years and total was ninety-nine point two eight nine. So this is the cost attributed one six zero five two zero. In case of corporation, whatever gain we get is called unindexed gain, and then we have to deduct the inflation effect. So the inflation effect called indexation allowance. And for indexation allowance, the rate will be given to you. You have to apply this rate on cost. What is the rate? There are two rates given: zero point one double four. This is from August to December, and November to December. So see which rate is applicable. We purchased this on November sixteen and sold on twenty two. So the relevant factor is this one: zero point. Zero four seven. So the cost is one six zero five two zero multiplied by the relevant indexation factor, and this gives us an indexation allowance of seven five double four, and we have a gain that is three seven nine three six. Now see the proceed that is received is two lakh six thousand, and we acquire a warehouse for seventy eight thousand. Also, there is a disposal of this acquisition of factory two on ninety six thousand. Now, as far as the ROR is concerned, we have to see who is selling. So, as Calc Limited is selling, so this particular Simpire Limited acquisition is irrelevant. So the total investment acquisition of Factory Two, ninety-six thousand, 
96, uh, sorry, 138,000. This is the investment. And warehouse, 78,000. No, 78,000 not because 70% uh, is for trade. So 78,000 into 0.7. That is 54,600. So the investment is for ROR, the so reinvestment is in two assets. One is factory two, full value, one lakh thirty-eight thousand, and other one is warehouse, which is seventy percent for business use. So we'll take only seventy percent. That is fifty-four thousand six hundred, and total is one ninety-two six hundred. This is reinvestment. So how much is needed now? We disposed of factory one and that factory one was disposed of at a price of two lakh sixty thousand six thousand. So the sale proceed is two lakh six thousand. Now see this sale proceed two lakh six thousand is uh, not used for six years. Last six months was not for business purpose. So we have to convert this into 5.5 .5 over six, the business portion. And as a result, it is 188.833. So technically, we have to match this with reinvestment. So my reinvestment is 192,600. As it is more than that, as fully reinvest. So as a result, if it is fully reinvestment, then reinvested in ROR, 100% ROR is available. And this ROR we can offset against the cost of new asset. So my gain was 37,936. 37,936 was gain. ROR, the available amount, and this is the chargeable amount. So, as a result, the gain eligible for rollover is thirty seven nine thirty six into 5.5 divided by 6 and this is going to be 34,775 and the remaining is taxable immediately that is 3161. So basically the question was one asset has been disposed of and two assets have been utilized but problem is that they do not have 100% business ownership. Some part ownership is related with non-trading activity. That's why we did something like that. Now, as far as the first part is concerned, the additional tax payable by the company, if company gift the computer to Nuri or the company make a loan and then write off the loan in the subsequent period. So first of all, give 
of computer to nuri now first of all we have to see whether the transfer of this computer or disposal of this computer will be like uh, will attract any kind of cgt see the value the sale proceed is market value is 1500 and the cost is 2600 so we can say that it's a chattel and the chattel rule is that if selling price and cost is less than 6000 then it's an exempt asset under 6000 rule and nuri is a director of the company so this is basically a taxable benefit for nuri the full market value the full market value is taxable this is the taxable benefit and we know that on taxable benefit company has to pay class 1 nic at the rate of 13.8% so there will be a class 1 nic 13.8% that is to be paid by the company that is 207 and accordingly this is an expense for the business and the company will get some relief against this 207 company will get 19% relief because the tax rate is 19% so the company will get a relief of 39 so nic liability for the company is 207 and relief against this is 39 so the net cost is or tax is 168 this is the tax on computer given to nuri next alternative is make a loan to nuri so we need to make a loan make a loan so as far as uh, loan is concerned this is basically a closed company so whenever this is the case of a closed company and the closed company is making a loan to its participator so they have to pay tax to hmrc notional tax which is the benefit multiply by 32.5% that is 488 and if that loan is written off then hmrc will repay after the loan is write off means first you pay to hmrc and if the loan is written off then hmrc will pay, pay it back and this writing of loan to director is treated as a benefit is a distribution is not an income it's a distribution so no corporation tax because it's not considered as an income 
so there is no corporation tax now as far as nuri is concerned for nuri as nuri is an employee so the amount of loan is usually a taxable benefit loan is a taxable benefit but as the amount of loan is less than 10000 so any loan given to employee which is less than 10000 is an exempt benefit for employee so nuri don't pay tax on this loan but there is an ic liability for the company as an employee so an ic liability is the same as the previous one we have an nic liability of 207 and against that liability we have same relief that is 39 so the value is 168 so as far as the tax is concerned in both the option my amount is 168 it's not that different but we have been asked to provide implications of uh, the total additional tax payable by sent by limited if that gift the computer and if they make a loan to nuri and then write off the loan on 6 april 2025 so i have discussed two questions today pertaining to few topics of uh, corporation cgt and uh, like vat a part question on vat so this r and d is one of the important topic there the rule of close company when you give loan to a director this is again an important topic with respect to company a short let me give you a short idea about something administration related to corporation for today corporation administration remember there are two types of companies one is a large company and another is a small company for tax payment the tax rate in uk is same irrespective of the size of the company but small company pay tax 9 months and one day after the accounting period and a large company to pay quarterly payments in installments now what what is the definition of a large company we have to explore the definition of a large company and uh, the definition says that a company is large if if that company's augmented profit if that company's augmented profit is more than the profit threshold and what is that profit threshold it's 1.5 million that profit threshold if the augmented profit of a company is more than 1.5 million then this company is classified as a large company and then installment is needed and what is the date of the installment suppose my accounting year is 
to 31st December. And let's assume that the company concerned is a large company. Then my first installment, second installment, third one, and fourth. So the first installment of a business, which is a large company, and the period of account is of 12 months, then it is uh, 14th of the seventh month from the beginning. So you'll count from January, Jan, Feb, March, April, May, June, July. So 14th July is the first installment. Then every three months, August, September, October, add three months. Then add three months, January. So this is 20, this is 2022, 2022, this is 2023, and the next three months, that is April 2023. These are the four installments. Okay, let me tell you, wait one minute. Let me just finish this discussion of the large company. Then let's talk about the transfer pricing. So what is augmented profit? Obviously, we have to talk about what is augmented profit. So what is augmented profit? So just give me one minute. So, what is augmented profit? If we need to find out augmented profit, what is the definition of augmented profit? So, the augmented profit is the taxable total profit, which we calculate from the main pro forma, and then we have to add dividend received from a non-group company non group company if we add this then that becomes the augmented profit and then we have to see the profit threshold this profit threshold given to us is 1.5 million and it is subject to a reduction first incident where it has been reduced is due to having a short period of account because this is going to be for a 12 months period and the second incident is when you have number of related companies the group companies the 51 percent group companies so suppose if my period of account is six months and i have suppose two related companies then this 1.5 million is to be reduced by number of related companies and time apportioned by the short period. So it's going to be 3,75,000. Now threshold has been 
change. So 1.5 million is fixed, but that's subject to a reduction as a result of the values. 